Hello and welcome to the debate on France 24. I'm Andrea Sankey in Paris. Tonight, tackling tax havens. How far should Europe go to limit or even terminate their existence? Well, if it were up to countries like France and Germany, Europe would go all the way, beginning with adding what they've labeled uncooperative countries like Switzerland and Luxembourg to a blacklist and issuing punishment for maintaining tax haven status and banking secrecy laws. Now, Britain and several other leading economies have backed the call, and tonight we'll be debating whether they're right to do so. Are tax havens in part to blame for the current global financial crisis? Do tax haven countries have an unfair, arguably illegal economic advantage over their non-haven counterparts? Or are they being used as a scapegoat for financial leaders who are at a loss to control their own struggling economies? Well, those are all questions I'll put to my panel tonight. And joining me here in the studio, Jean Mercat, Advocacy Officer on Financing for Development at the CCFD, the Catholic Committee Against Hunger and Development. Joining us via satellite from Washington, Daniel Mitchell, Senior Fellow at the Cato Institute. From Zurich, Andreas Misbach, head of private finance program for the Byrne Declaration. And from London, Alex Cobham, an econ econometrician at Oxford University with the Oxford Council of Good Governance. Thanks all so much for joining us tonight. Well, let me just begin in London. Alex, just how much of a problem generally are tax havens for EU economies? Well, I should start by saying I actually now work for Christian Aid, the development uh, NGO and manage the policy team. So I've, I've left the University of Oxford, but thank you for the okay. uh, introduction anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, tax havens are certainly a, a very serious problem um, for both rich and particularly for poorer um, economies. What we're seeing in the current financial crisis is that tax havens have seriously um, exacerbated and arguably caused many of the problems of um, a lack of information uh, and a lack of regulation which are directly responsible for the crisis. What we also know from our work at Christian Aid is that that same lack of transparency in international financial flows is directly responsible for uh, stripping developing countries of tax uh, revenues of around 160 billion dollars a year, um, perhaps more, and that's much more than they receive in aid. Um, and is extremely damaging um, to the prospects of the poor people living in those countries. Uh, give us a little more then about uh, the problems they've caused as well for developed countries. You say they've exacerbated and even caused the problems of, that are responsible for the financial crisis right now. How so? Well, the primary problem underlying this crisis is that financial institutions have become overextended without investors necessarily being able to see, or indeed regulators being able to see, just uh, how extended those institutions were. To give you an example, the, um, the Baal II Capital Accords, which regulate um, how banking and other financial institutions should behave, uh, the guidelines indicate that you should have assets um, worth not more than eight times what your base of equity or deposits is. Now, uh, the tax haven of Ireland, for example, in its financial centre, had uh, from the, the American financial institution of Bear Stearns uh, uh, had operations there with um, an extension of assets of $119 for every dollar of uh, their initial um, equity base. Now that kind of ratio is extremely damaging and is the reason why when questions began to be asked about the value of financial institutions assets it was very rapidly spread through the sector right. and that the instability that that caused is really responsible for the depth of the crisis that we're now seeing. Okay, Alex, let me turn it over to uh, Washington, D.C. now. Uh, Daniel Mitchell joining us there. Um, I suppose you don't think tax havens are much of a problem, but rather kind of a blessing uh, for financial, uh, the finance sector around the world. Uh, tax havens clearly play a very desirable role in the global economy. They generate big economic benefits for global commerce by facilitating international trade and commerce. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on high-tax nations to lower their tax rates and reduce the tax bias against capital, which also helps economic growth, not just in the tax havens, but also in the high-tax countries. But tax havens also have a very important moral benefit. Most of the world's population still lives in governments 
uh, under governments that are either oppressive or incompetent. And so whether you're talking about being a political dissident or whether you're talking about someone, say, in Venezuela who might be kidnapped if your financial affairs became public through the corruption in the tax office, tax havens play a critical role in the global economy. Now, this notion that tax havens somehow have any blame for the current financial crisis is nonsensical. What happened is we had a lot of housing bubbles in onshore countries, and in those onshore countries, the blame is mostly uh, the part of the central banks that created too much liquidity. Tax havens have nothing to do with the problem whatsoever, and I find it amusing that some people are stretching because of their desire to persecute these low-tax jurisdictions, they're stretching and coming up with very fanciful arguments that tax havens somehow have any role in the current problems in the onshore countries. Okay, Alex, I'll give you a very quick response because I could see you wanted to jump in there and then I'm going to turn it over to Zurich. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, there's two things to say. First, I think it's widely accepted, perhaps not by Daniel, but by most policymakers, that tax havens played an important, um, perhaps major role in causing the crisis. The second thing I really want to address is that the idea that tax havens somehow support citizens against governments is completely ludicrous. What we see is that tax havens leech away the revenues from both rich and poor countries and thereby prevent governments from delivering the tax policies that their citizens ask for. Tax havens are fundamentally undemocratic and indeed anti-democratic. Okay, Daniel, I'll... Uh, allow me, though, to say one thing. Provide a single shred of evidence that tax havens had anything to do with financial turmoil in an onshore country. And obviously, we have a big fundamental difference in philosophy. I don't think people are property of government. I think people are sovereign unto themselves. And when governments become too oppressive and overtax and overspend, I don't blame, for instance, an overtaxed German or French citizen for trying to protect some of their family's money from a government that's trying to take 60 or 70 percent of it. Okay, let me get a response then from Zurich. Andreas Misbach, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I would like to check what you just said, Daniel. I'm a little bit shocked because I'm coming from a country with a very strong democratic tradition, and this is deeply undemocratic because talking about Europe and the other democracies of the world, people choose their own governments and their own tax systems. And it's actually a legitimate way if you think that taxes are too high in your country. You can, you can try to change that by building a political majority. In your country, you had a government that has lower taxes for the very rich over the last few years. But, and if you don't think that you're able to reach that political majority, you have another possibility. You can leave the country and go to somewhere else where taxes are low. There are few very nice islands that offer that, that possibility. But what is absolutely not acceptable and, not, and violates the principle of democratic society is actually that you stay in a country, you benefit from all the possibilities that your country offer in security, in, um, in education, in social, uh, in, in, um, in a social welfare system where it exists, but you're not willing to participate with your own share. So you benefit from the honest taxpayers, but you self, you bring your money to a tax haven like Switzerland and don't pay your fair share of taxes. And I think this is not acceptable and it's not democratic. Okay, let me bring it back to the studio then, give Jean a chance to respond. Do you find tax havens a problem? I mean, you can speak spe specifically to the French economy in particular. Is Sarkozy right to say it is time to put an end to this practice? Yeah, it is estimated that uh, tax havens cost uh, yearly 50 billion euros to the French government. That is uh, the whole of the French deficit every year. So obviously the, the cost is very high. As Alex said, the cost is even higher for developing countries' economies. 